Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. I am back today with another furniture flip. I did get these pieces for free off Marketplace, so if you're looking for free furniture, that is a great place to start. I also have a video about how I find free furniture and the best types of furniture to flip, so I will link that video above in the iCard as well as in the description box below, so check that one out. Thank you so much for watching, and let's hop right into the flip. It's Ebony's Creativity. Here are the pieces that we're going to be working on today. As you can see, they are very blue with red hardware and big white trim on the bottom. So we're going to see how we can update these just a little bit. Looking at the top, there's not really any damage there's just a little bit of scratches which is a beautiful thing this piece is made from wood cardboard and particle board so i have a mix of materials that we're going to be working with today that's not really my favorite thing i love all wood furniture but we ended up with a nice result so i can't be too mad the insides were okay this is the cardboard at the bottom of this drawer it's like a really strong cardboard um and here you can see the Insignia from the furniture company, Leah. I've never seen that furniture company before, so I thought that was interesting. I learn something new every time I get a new piece to flip. But most of these drawers look really good on the inside, so I'm happy about that too. Continuing to look around, you can see there's some more body work on this side that needs to be done. And just a couple of deep scratches and some gouges, but not too big of a deal. And over to the nightstand, the top of it is more, much more used than the tall one, which is to be expected. I'm sure we all use our nightstands more than we use our tall or bigger dressers. So you can see like cut marks and stuff like that. But there is really nothing too bad on the top of either one of these, which is great. This hardware, I thought it was actually kind of a trip. I've never really seen that hardware before. But I don't like it, so of course I'm going to be changing it. And just to keep going around, you can see the other side of this nightstand, which is not too bad. So here's one last before shot. I'm going to get started by removing the drawers. And I'm a person who likes straight lines and kind of simplified pieces. So I am going to be removing all these bulky trim pieces. I just think furniture looks better without them in most cases. And I'm just taking my hammer and a flathead screwdriver and kind of just prying it off, as you can see. I think it's starting to look better already. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and remove the second trim piece as well. There's a lot of glue and residue from where those trim pieces were so I'm just going to go ahead and start my sanding process with a 220 grit sandpaper sanding in the areas where the trim was. Then since this is made from particle board I'm going to start sanding down both pieces. I don't think I've ever done two pieces before if I'm not mistaken I haven't so this is going to be quite an adventure. <laughs> As you can see, I've mapped out a line across a straight piece of this bottom trim, and I am just going to be using the jigsaw to cut this out. Now, if you've watched any of my older videos, you know me and the jigsaw are not besties, but it seems that I'm getting better because I was able to do this relatively well, so I was really proud of myself. I'm just cutting across to get rid of some of those squigglies. I don't really like that. Like I said, I like straight lines, and I did the same thing on the nightstand that you see me doing on the bigger dresser. So here's how it looked once that was complete for the dresser and here's the nightstand. So up next I'm going to be removing the hardware. Normally I place them in a Ziploc bag but this time I'm going to be putting them in a bucket since that's what I have outside here with me. My intentions were just to scuff sand the front of the drawers but as you can see the paint was coming off really easily and there was some beautiful wood underneath it. If you remember from the before pictures, the bigger dresser does not have recessed areas on the drawers, but the smaller ones do. So I'll use the speckling to fill these in. The recessed areas were pretty deep, so I wanted to use something that I knew would be flexible and would not crack. 
and I did end up repeating this process twice. While I was waiting for that to dry, I went ahead and started to work on the rest of the drawers by mapping out the space where my new hardware would go. So the previous hardware had two holes, as you can see. My new hardware is so beautiful and it only has one hole. So I went ahead and started working on making the hole for the new hardware in all of the drawers. Then I went back in with the spackle to fill the old hardware holes and I did have to do this process twice as well. So I noticed that everything I did with the spackle, I had to do it twice. This was really my first time working with spackle, but I do like the fact that it's much easier to sand once it's dried than other materials that can be used to fill. And I found it a little bit easier to apply. So I thought that was a good thing, but I think my favorite filler, now that I've tried pretty much all of them, is going to be the quick wood. But I really wanted to experiment working with spackle, and I am not too concerned about covering these holes perfectly because my new hardware will cover both of the existing holes just fine. So I figured this was the perfect piece to try this. I'm still waiting on all that spackle to dry, so I'm popping back over to this nightstand. As you can see, my line with the jigsaw was a little bit wavy on this nightstand so I went in with some 40 grit sandpaper and was able to straighten that line up some. Particle board furniture doesn't give you much room to sand so I wanted to do a feel all over the piece just to make sure that the areas felt smooth to my hand so that I knew what kind of finish I would be getting when I tried to paint over it. I feel some areas on the edge that are a little bit rough where you can feel the texture of the particle board. So I also went in with some spackle and filled those areas in just to smooth them out some. So here's the quick wood that I was just raving about. And I had to pull this out because on the nightstand, one of the feet was missing a little chunk. So I used this to kind of recreate where that area should be. You wouldn't want to use a spackle to make a structural repair. You'd want to use something more durable like quick wood. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm kind of just looking at the other side to see how this piece should look and just trying to replicate that the best as I can. When I'm working with quick wood, I always make the piece larger than what I actually need it to be. Just so that I have some buffer space for when I go back to sand. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm popping back over to the drawer fronts and I am just going to sand down everything that I have filled in. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand till all my fillers are smooth. And then I'm going to go back with a 220 grit sandpaper to make sure everything is smooth and that will serve as my scuff sanding before I prep these for primer. I know you guys would really love it if I had a surf prep sander, so don't forget to subscribe so I can get one. But in the meantime, I am just sanding down the areas that I could not reach with my sander with a piece of sandpaper. And I have some Dawn and Simple Green and some nice warm water in this bucket with a microfiber cloth, and I am just going to be using that to clean off the drawers. Here is the roller that I used. I got that question on a previous video. So I am going to be using that to apply my bin primer to all of the drawer fronts. If you have never worked with bin before, you kind of just want to get it on in a nice even coat and leave it. You don't want to keep trying to manipulate it because it starts to dry a couple of minutes after you apply it. And if you keep trying to go over it, it will start to become textured and that will cause you to have to do more sanding. So just try to get a nice even coat. Make sure your roller or brush is very well saturated and just kind of try to go over things really quickly and as smoothly and evenly as possible.
So here's how these look as the second coat is drying. As you can see, it's a very opaque finish. So I'm happy with that. I got it as smooth as I could. But Ben will always leave like this orange peel texture, as you can see. So you will have to sand down the drawer after using the Ben primer. I use 400 grit sandpaper if I have it. If not, 220 works as well. So here I am with a very fine sanding pad and I'm just going to be sanding that until I can knock back all of that orange peel texture to make these as smooth as I can and prep them for painting. And of course I'll be wiping them down again after I finish sanding. So after they are all clean I'm going to go in with this fusion mineral paint in the color Damask which is like a dusty rose and my old faithful 045 Klingon brush that I love and I'm going to go ahead and get these painted up. I'm going to start out by misting the drawer fronts with my water mister and then I just go in with the paint and since I'm trying to get into some pretty intricate areas with a really large brush I am just going to go ahead and start out with the edges and work my way into doing the center part. Fusion mineral paint is not one coat coverage in most cases so I am going to be doing two coats on all of these and I will be doing them all in pretty much the same way, starting with the more intricate areas and then working my way into the flatter, straighter areas. While you're working with this paint or any other paint for that matter, you want to make sure that if you start to feel the brush tugging or if you start to see a lot of deep brush strokes that you missed either your paintbrush or your piece of furniture or sometimes you can even miss both. A lot of these paints are water-based so Adding a little bit more water is not too big of a deal. You don't want to make it into a runny, watery mess, but use your discretion. That's the way to eliminate really deep paint lines that are visible once your paint is finished drying. You want to always maintain a wet edge. They say that it's not necessary to do all your brush strokes in the same direction, but to satisfy the requirements of my OCD, I always do that. And I always get a nice finish from it. Here's how these looked after two coats of paint. There is some areas where you can still see that's because I used a lot of water because I did not want these two layers to be completely opaque because I have some more paint to put on top. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I didn't want. I wasn't going for a completely opaque coverage. I watered this down a lot just so it wouldn't be cakey when I added on my final layers of paint. So this is perfect for what I'm trying to do, but if you wanted to achieve a more opaque look, you'd not use as much water as I did. So while I'm waiting on those to dry, I'm popping back over to the drawer body. And as you can see, there's been a lot of sanding, a lot of Places where the blue is no longer visible, where the white is no longer visible, where I've wasted primer <laughs> on top of this, where the back has been completely painted blue for some unbeknownst reason to me. So I am going to go ahead and just give this another once over. I felt all the areas that look like they may cause an issue and they all feel smooth to the touch. So I am just going to be going in with my Ben primer and making sure to give this a nice good two coats of coverage. So here's how this looked after two coats of primer. As you can see, really good opaque coverage, but it does still have that orange texture. So I am going to have to sand this as well once it dries. And I did also prime the back because like I said, it was covered in blue paint. I don't know why people cover the backs of furniture, but to each his own, I guess. So this is how this looks really good after two coats of primer. Here I just wanted to show you the top drawer was done 
with the quick wood and the bottom drawer was filled with spackle. So you can see kind of where the original holes were that I spackled, but on the top drawer, you cannot see any trace that those two panels on the edges had a hole there previously. So like I said, I think the quick wood is really a better filler. So now it is time to paint and I have had this paint for a little bit and I'm super excited to try it. So this is why I didn't want to cake up paint on the drawer fronts because I have two layers of this metallic paint to get through. It's, the color is rose gold. It's also by Fusion and I've never used it before but I noticed it is quite a thicker consistency than their paint is so it made me a little bit nervous. I just used it out of the can without watering it and it was much harder to work with without watering it. So for the rest of the drawers, I did start to water it a little bit with my mister. And although I did find this a little harder to work with than normal fusion paint, the color was absolutely beautiful when I finished. It's really sparkly and just very pretty in person. So after two coats of the metallic paint, I will be using this clear tough coat by Fusion as my sealer. And I love this top coat because it is so easy. A lot of people have problems with polys that you have to brush on because you can see the brush marks. This method is so fast and it does not leave any brush marks or any marks from the sponge. So you can use a sponge like the one I have. It's really similar to the yellow one that they sell at Dollar Tree in the car section. So those are good. Just dampen it a little bit with your mister and squeeze out all the water just so that it's wet and apply the top coat to your sponge like you see me doing here and just wipe it on. If you have problems with top coats, you should seriously try this one. It's non-yellowing. It really is tough and I love it. I probably won't go back to polycrylic because this is just so much simpler and just leaves a really, really beautiful finish. Here is the hardware that I mentioned earlier. I love this hardware. I got it off Amazon and I just think it is so beautiful. Obviously, I've taken this little set from a little boy set to a little girl set, if you can't tell by the pink. So I just figured this is a perfect topper just to really set it off. In the background, you can see my dining table that I also have a video about. So that will also be linked down in the playlist below. So make sure you check that one out too if you haven't. So since I showed you how I primed with the larger dresser, I'm gonna show you how I paint with the smaller dresser. So similar to what I did with the drawer fronts, I am doing the edges and the parts that are kind of hard to get into first, and then I'm just continuing down the side, trying to keep my strokes as even as possible. I'm misting my brush when it starts to feel like it's tugging or pulling, adding more paint, and then just continuing to go up and down, up and down, on the sides. As you can see, once the first coat is done, it is not perfect coverage. However, I was not aiming for perfect coverage because I have three more layers of paint to do after this layer. One more of the pink and then two of the metallic rose gold color. The pink coats are literally just there to help the rose gold color pop, so I did not try to get those as perfect as possible. So after two coats of the pink paint, I am going back in with the rose gold paint and I learned from the first experience, which is when I was painting the drawers, to go ahead and water this down. It has like a moussey texture and it just wasn't sliding on that well with the drawer fronts. I was able to get a good finish, but I figured watering it down would just help me out a lot. So that's what I chose to do on the body parts of the dresser. And I just am going in with my mister and a wet brush and just trying to get this to glide on. When I was working with it at first, as I started to overwork it, it started to form little balls and then they got lodged in my paintbrush and it kind of created a little bit of a mess. So by watering it down, it just helps everything stay wet so it can glide a little bit better. And I didn't have the problem with it balling up this time, but the coverage was much better the first time. So I ended up having to do two coats of this where I really could have got away with one coat when I didn't water it, but it was just much easier to apply with the water. So I just decided to do this method. It was really hard to get two full, nice, good coats on this. I actually ended up doing like two and a half coats, but I was really afraid for it to become cakey and still not be able to hide all the brush strokes. 
So I just decided to embrace them. And I think it still turned out pretty good, even though there was no possible way for me to eliminate all of the brush strokes. So in that case, I just tried to make sure my brush strokes were as straight across as possible. You'll see me going back over those several times just to try to get them as straight as I can. Some people really love that hand painted look anyway. So I think this will still sell fine and it will still turn out as a beautiful piece. But my hope was to eliminate all the stroke marks. So now I have finished with all of my painting and I am going in with that tough coat, top coat with the wet sponge the same as I did for the drawers. And I'm showing you the bigger dresser here and the nightstand here, but I did them both the exact same way, up and down movements with a damp sponge. So as a reminder, here is where we started. And without further ado, here are the final images of these two dressers. Let me know how you think they turned out. I really think they turned out great. I hope I'm able to convey just how beautiful they are in person. The hardware is just gorgeous. It just fits these perfectly. Everything turns out really, really, really well in my opinion. So you leave a comment and let me know your opinion. If you have been thinking about trying metallic paint, it does have a bit of a learning curve. So I would suggest that you try it out on a scrap piece first just to get your technique down. But otherwise, it is beautiful. I can't wait to try the other colors and see what other creations that I can come up with. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I am hoping that I earned your subscription during this video because I really have been trying to make my videos better. Hopefully you guys have noticed. Thank you so much for watching. If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye guys.